My name is Nicole Dumont, and I'm a PhD student in the Computational Neuroscience Research Group at the University of Waterloo. The paper I'm presenting is called Accurate Representation for Spatial Cognition Using Grid Cells. Grid cells are neurons found in the entorenal cortex that fire hexagonally tiled points in space. They provide input to the place cells of the hippocampus, which fire at specific locations. These place cells are believed to collectively form a cognitive map, representing space. Recent experiments involving humans performing non-spatial tasks have found neuroactivity with hexagonal symmetry in brain regions similar to those activated during spatial navigation. It is hypothesized that the population code of place and grid cells may have a more general usage for mapping continuous features beyond just space. Vector symbolic architectures are a family of methods in which concepts are represented as high-dimensional vectors, which can be associated with one another via a binding operation. However, these methods are limited to representing discrete structures. Recently, spatial semantic pointers, or SSPs, were introduced as a way to encode continuous variables within a particular vector symbolic architecture called the semantic pointer architecture, or SPA. In this work, we show that a population of grid cells can be used to represent SSPs and be used to generate place cell activity. This adds biological realism to the SSP representation and links biological findings of a larger theoretical framework for representing concepts. In SPA, an integer can be represented by repeatedly binding a vector of itself. This idea is generalized for representing real numbers by fractional binding. You can represent two continuous variables, like an xy position in space, by binding the representation of each dimension together. This is called a spatial semantic pointer. The capital XY vectors here are called the Basie vectors and are typically set as random vectors. SSPs fit within the broader SPA framework. One could take the semantic pointers representing a set of objects or landmarks and bind each of their locations SSP representation, and then add them together to make a memory vector which represents a scene. This figure shows a simple example. A memory vector of four items was queried by binding each object's semantic pointer. The resultant vector representing all items' locations is visualized here as a heat map. The color of a point is the dot product similarity of the resultant vector with the spatial semantic pointer representing that point. A spatial semantic pointer can be represented by the collective activity of a neural population using the NEF. The activity of a single neuron, labeled I, is given here. We use the population's activity to code out what the population represents, or to code out a function of it. The optimal coders can be found exactly. We can set the neurons encoder vectors to be SSPs of random points. So locations that the neurons are sensitive to. In this case, the dot product term ends up being a sum of plane waves, each propagating in a direction given by the phases of the Basie vectors in the Fourier domain. And so the Basie vectors can be used to set the activity patterns of neurons in the population. But which Basie vectors are best to use? Consider the task of decoding out the responses of a large set of place cells from the SSP population. This would be our objective function, the squared Frobenius error norm between the ideal place cell responses and the decoded responses, where the G matrix here is our SSP's population's activity sampled across space. The form of the optimal G, given a non-negativity constraint, has been previously investigated. The neuron should have hexagonally patterned firing rates. If the faces of the basis components in the Fourier domain are in groups of free that sum to zero, then the neurons have hexagonal firing patterns, like grid cells. We present a method for constructing the Basie vectors and encoders that result in a population that have a modular organization of grid cells of varying scales and orientations. Let's look at the firing rates across space of some example neurons in our models. On the left here, we see firing patterns of neurons in a population that represents an SSP that is constructed of random Basie vectors. In the middle, firing patterns of neurons represent an SSP if Basie vectors as described in the paper are used. I'll refer to this as the grid cell population. And on the right, examples of place cell output decoded from the grid cell population is shown. We can also simulate these populations using models of spiking neurons. We compare how well the grid cell population decodes place cell output to the random Basie population. We find that it achieves a lower squared Frobenius norm error measure, and decoded place field centers are closer to the target centers. In addition, the grid cell population scales better as the number of place cells is increased, while the number of neurons in the SSP population remains constant, which makes the reconstruction task more difficult. To conclude, SSPs can be represented by a population of grid cells with patterns of varying scales, and place cells can be decoded from this representation. Beyond this, spatial semantic pointers represented by this grid code can be used to represent any concept that resides in a continuous feature space. Semantic pointers, discrete or continuous, that reside in different cognitive spaces, can be bound together in hierarchical structures, allowing for rich and complex representations suitable for cognitive models that can be simulated with spike in neural networks. Thank you for listening. Check out the paper and poster for more details. If you have any questions or comments, send me an email or pop by my Google Meet Q&A session.